Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you the new concept for my solar steam engine. Now the biggest problem I had with the previous solar steam engine project is that where I live that there's barely a day without clouds, at least not when I wanted to do the experiments. So what I need is a buffering system for when there are clouds or no sun at all that the steam engine can still run. I also noticed that the temperature range from 20 to 100 degrees was a complete waste of energy because only above 100 degrees you're building steam pressure. So all that energy you put in below 100 degrees will go to waste. And also the higher you get above 100 degrees Celsius the more energy you lose because it's harder and harder to keep it well insulated. So what I'm now going to do is heat up a lot of water with my solar panel and keep it below 100 degrees Celsius and store it in a very well insulated container. And when at any time I need energy, I will use that hot water to boil butane and power a steam engine. And if I need more energy, I can just increase the amount of solar panels and the volume of water. Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how I'm planning to do all that. And for this experiment I'm putting butane in a soda bottle with a connection in the cap and in this short clip you can see how I did that. Okay, so let's fill this bottle up. Just put this in the freezer so it's very cold, way below the boiling temperature of butane. It's very cold. Let's put on a glove. Now you see that there's not much gas escaping because it's so far below its boiling point. But it's just staying a liquid, which of course safer and also you lose less butane. That's enough for this experiment. Okay, so now the pressure of the butane is just zero bar. And that's because it's still quite cold. So about uh, minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. But when it warms up, it slowly starts to gain pressure. Okay, so if I now shake the bottle, force it to evaporate, it starts to cool down and as I warm it and the pressure slowly starts to rise. <clears throat> it's about 22 degrees Celsius in here. So the pressure should rise to about one and a half bar. It's about a little bit under one and a half bar so that's okay. It's what's to be expected. It's good. Okay, so I have here now two vessels filled with water, one with cold water and one with hot water. And the cold one is, let's see, twelve point six degrees Celsius, and the hot one. Okay, around forty degrees. Okay, so now we know that. If I now put the bottle into the hot water and the pressure should be rising and it does so now it's at one and a half bar it's agitated a bit for this experiment I'm not going to go much higher than two bar just for safety because I'm using these uh, soda bottles and uh, although they can uh, handle quite a high pressure I believe around uh, 11 bar but with air and all that's uh, pretty safe but not when you have butane in it because that would be very explosive so it's now two and a half bar so I think that's enough if I now put it in cold water the pressure starts to drop again This is of course the same thing with boiling water. If you raise the temperature of the boiler, the pressure rises. If you lower the temperature of the boiler, the pressure drops. 
So what I did now is I transferred heat from this vessel to this vessel. With that heat transfer you can of course extract work from it. So I'm now going to make a rig where I can evaporate at the hot side and condense at the cold side and thereby you have a pressure differential and with the pressure differential I can, I can power a steam engine. So I'm first going to make that and then I will explain how it works. Okay, so now the setup is ready. Now I have two bottles. Uh, one with a little bit of butane and one with a lot of butane, liquid butane. Under pressure, I just fill this one so the pressure is a little bit lower than this one. And a flow meter, a pressure gauge and of course a valve to open it. This is the bottle that I'm going to put in hot water. So this is the boiler side, if you will. The butane will boil off, flows through the flow meter and through the hose. I have here this distillation column. This uh, distillation column I made years ago for another distillation experiment. And it's just an eight millimeter tube all the way to the top. So the hose is connected to the same tube as this one. And there's a 22 millimeter pipe on the outside. That's where the water flows through. So you have reverse flow cooling. So the, the hot butane comes in at the top, flows through the bottom, and the cold water flows in from the bottom and goes out through the top. And therefore the gas that flows in and starts condensing will be cooled almost all the way to the temperature of the water that comes in here. That's the whole idea of the reverse flow cooling. So the butane condensate will come out here and flows back in this bottle. Use both transparent bottles so you can see what's happening. This helps to regulate the water flow. I just have my garden hose hooked up to it, so it's about you know, 12 degree water. It's enough to condense it. And here I have three valves. One to close this part, one to close the outside, and one to close this side. And with these three valves I can ventilate the whole system. So if I open this one and this one and I let a little bit of gas flow out, I can make sure that there's no air in the whole system. And then I close this one and I open this one a bit and I blow up the other side. So then I know there's only butane in the whole system. If you like to know why that's important, then I advise you to watch the video of Cody's lab where he's demonstrating the law of partial pressure. So we'll put a link in the description. Okay, so I have now my pot of hot water, which is about 51.3 degrees. So if I now place this bottle with the butane, the boiler side, in here. And I have to shake it a bit because the soda bottle is a very bad conductor. So by rotating it, it exposes much of the butane to the sides of the bottle and also the hot water will be stirred around the bottle. You see the pressure rise and it's higher than this side which is of course because the valves are closed. I open the water, steady flow of water and now open this valve. You can see there's butane flowing out. The pressure here is still high, the pressure there is still low. So there's a pressure difference a little bit of uh, butane condensation, but it will disappear. And in a while you will see butane drip in here. Oh wait. <laughs> I closed the valves. Here and here, so now you will see. Okay. There is the condensation. You can see how well this condensation works because now the reservoir was just the whole condensation column. And you can still see that the pressure here is quite high and there it's still one and a half bar. So there's gas boiling off here. You can see that it produces work, although it's a very small amount because it's uh, pushing up that ball. Okay, let's look at it from this side. It's now slowly boiling again, heating up again, building pressure. It's not boiling, it's just building pressure. Okay, if I now open this valve again. You can see that it's boiling here. There's gas flowing, but temperature is already 
a bit lower than it was before. So you can really see it boiling here. Uh, the water temperature should be a little bit higher. It's now 46.8. So you can see that it quite rapidly uh, absorbs energy. Also this pot is of course not insulated so I lose a lot of energy by convection and evaporation of the water. But in any case, this will work. So if I now make an efficient boiler, more or less like a real steam boiler with flame pipes, something like that, made out of copper, that's hot water flow through it, and the hot water that I made all day with solar energy that flowed through the boiler and thereby create butane steam, power a steam engine, the steam engine can do anything from generating electricity or powering a small car. That's what I'm going to do. How awesome would it be? to run a few miles on 50 liters of water. Hot water, of course. Of course, this is not a closed system because now this one is almost empty and all the butane is over there. But that's the same thing with a normal steam engine. So I uh, will have to put in a feed pump that mechanically pumps the condensed butane back into the boiler. And that's easily done just by the power of the steam engine. So then you will have a closed system and just by putting in heat and condensing on the other side, you can produce some work. Okay, so for this project I'm going to build a new steam engine and it's going to be a triple expansion steam engine. And these are the cylinder sizes I'm going to use. So there's a high pressure cylinder, a intermediate pressure cylinder and a low pressure cylinder. You can see that this thing is going to be pretty big and uh, I'm going to configure them in a star configuration because that's easier to make the crankshaft because I don't have a lathe and a mill. I also think it's quite a challenge to make a steam engine without a lathe in the mill. So that's what I'm going to do and I already have all the plans to make it. And uh, just to show you, this is the piston type I'm going to make, which is uh, made out of uh, thick Teflon foil. And this just fits in here. This one will hold the pressure from this side, this one will hold the pressure from that side. And a lot of you have uh, mentioned that I should actually use a Stirling engine. And of course, uh, besides that Stirling engines are pretty cool and I'm definitely going to make a Stirling engine somewhere in the future. A Stirling engine is not a steam engine, so a solar steam engine cannot be built by using a Stirling engine. So I'm first going to make a solar steam engine and when that's running, I'm going to make a Stirling engine. And uh, also, I'm an incredible steam freak, so I will use any excuse to build and implement a new steam engine. Also, the Stirling engine is not as easy as just those low pressure Stirling engines you can find everywhere because they have very little power. A very efficient Stirling engine with a lot of power needs high pressure helium and uh, also the disadvantage of Stirling engines is that they have a long warm up time and they need quite a high temperature differential. So that makes it somewhat less ideal to use in the setup I want to make. And also the power output is harder to change with a Stirling engine because with a steam engine you just open a valve or close it. But with a Stirling engine you have to increase or decrease the pressure of the working gas of the Stirling engine. So these are all things that I'm taking into consideration. But first I'm going to build a solar steam engine and if that works well I'm definitely going to make a Stirling engine because they're very cool. Okay, so there are going to be a lot of videos in where I explain how I'm building this steam engine and also how the rest of this system is going to work. So if you don't want to miss out, then please subscribe, uh, click the notification bell and see you next time.